Good afternoon. I call the August 13, 2020, uh, Swigo County Legislature in session. Will the clerk please call the roll? Michael Yarden? Present. Herbert Yarden? Present. Ed Gilson? Here. David Hull? Here. Dwight Rehill? Here. John Martino? Here. Brandon Travell? Here. Paul House? Here. James Weatherup? Here. Mary Allen Chesbro? Here. Linda Lockwood? Here. Richard Klein? Present. Patrick Twist? Here. Stephen Walpole? Here. Nathan Evans? Here. Thomas Strong? Here. Lauren Nagano? Here. Robert Wilmot? Here. Marie Shaw? Here. Tim Stahl? Here. Terry Wilbur? Here. James Grasson? Here. Morris Cervello? Here. Mark Greco? Here. Ralph Stacy Jr. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have more. Thank you. Please, please lead us in the invitation. Please stand the invitation. Please help us look at the past with gratitude and to the future with hope. Make us unafraid of our hopes and dreams and release us from skepticism. Teach us to accept the challenges that we are faced with and help us build a stronger tomorrow. May we always be sincere in our efforts to help others in need and have the wisdom to teach our children to love, to respect, and to be kind so they may grow with a peace of mind. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask legislator Herbert Yernan, a U.S. Army veteran, to please the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to its republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. For approval of the minutes of the county legislature's regular meeting on July 9th. So moved. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Approved. Thank you. Um, introduction of visitors or none. Public speakers on resolutions of the day. just in our county 30,263 people. We've had 260 people, uh, positive cases. We sadly have had lost four neighbors, but we have only seven active cases in our county right now. So we're doing very good. We need to keep that up. Um, I would continue to tell you that we advocate uh, near daily with the control room call to push these numbers along and to see what else other businesses and things that we can get open. I would note if you haven't seen the news that wedding receptions apparently um, have Judge Sotheby uh, struck down as a religious freedom item. So let's all get married. <laughs> <laughs> Any other county officials? Thank you. Reports of standing committees. Thank you. Reports of special committees. Thank you. Moving on to resolutions. Resolution GC1 by Legislator Holtz. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution. Urges of that. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification, county clerk, motor vehicle, additional hours. Okay, you should move the $13,000 within his own budget. This is the help pay for uh, uh, old time and stuff for his employees uh, to get the dealer or place. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Resolution GC2 by Legislator Holt. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution for urgent adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification, county clerk, motor vehicle, overtime hours. Uh, this is for overtime hours around $5,000. So I'm going to get a approval on our registration in a timely manner. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Resolution GC3 by Legislator Waltz. Mr. Chairman, I'll give you resolution. Urges adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing the execution of an intermunicipal agreement with the county.
County of Portland, Weights and Measures, Mobile Fuel, Calibration Unit, Hoover, Research.
Resolution HS2 by Legislator Rito. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I offer the following resolution and urge adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification, Department of Social Services, employment and training, training to accept Shiman Foundation grant funds. Uh, this is a grant that our uh, grant writer, Strategic, uh, has helped greatly with. Uh, this is in the, the amount of $54,968 uh, to help uh, promote, to help, help promote the uh, activities of employment and training services down in Fulton, uh, and it includes uh, an electronic billboard which will promote those uh, services. Uh, legislator Rehill has a uh, situation that he wants to attend to. Uh, 
So we'll give him a minute to get his things. I would note for Economic Development Planning Committee, there's no resolutions this month. We'll move on now to the Health Committee. Resolution H one by Legislator Craft. Mr. Chairman, fellow legislators, I present the following resolution for your consideration. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budgetary modification for health department redistribution of COVID-19 response fees. So we have previously accepted $122,426 in COVID uh, response money, and this resolution is dispersing that to the correct clients to take care of this. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Resolution HE2 by Legislator Caressa. Mr. Chairman, fellow legislators, I present the following resolution for your consideration. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budgetary modification of health department insurance recovery funds to repair vehicle. So this is simply a insurance recovery in the amount of $7,698.25 uh, due to a vehicle. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. That's it. Thank you. Uh, resolution IT1 by Legislator Walpole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have the following resolution. I just adopt. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification of the department paving. Yes, Mr. Chairman. The annual budget provides $3,234,952 state assistance, the local governments, just one not that throughout the beginning of this, we took a more cautious approach. We started off with $1 million to get things moving. We're just letting that another million dollars. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Cool. Uh, resolution FP1 by Legislator Martino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have this resolution here. It's an option. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing capital project closures and transfer of project balances. Um, I, I believe we have to uh, small, make a small amendment on this. Um, I'll refer to our county administrator on the language. Uh, yes. Uh, there's an error on one of the lines. Uh, should be probably uh, yeah, good. Yeah, they aircraft apron design. Yes, that it should replace uh, the first reference to Northwoods project in the uh, on the budget modification form itself. Capital project 83 is the airport project, not Northwoods. Thank you, Legislator. Okay, so after the amendment first. Second. 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 Motion made and seconded to amend. Any discussion on the amendment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Back to the original, sir. Back to the original. Uh, this is, as stated, we're closing uh, project closures, transferring the project balances back to the general fund. Uh, this is cleaning books, basically, and put all the monies back that was not used for any capital product, the leftover monies that were used for capital projects. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution FP2 by Legislator Martino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer this resolution and urge adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing the reclassification of two positions in the Human Resources Department. Thank you. This uh, resolution is to replace or reclassify two positions in the Human Resources Department um, due to the retirement uh, of certain persons and will ultimately save the county a uh, minimum of $25,000. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Resolution FP3 by Legislator Martino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have this resolution or this adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification energy recovery facility. This resolution is due to the fires that we had at the uh, energy recovery.
recovery facility. There's things that are happening prior to insurance fund relief. So we are uh, looking to move some money into a capital project to uh, pay for the things that we need to start to get it all back online, which uh, these monies will be returned to us from the insurance company at the time of completion. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution FP4, again by Legislator Martino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer this resolution and urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution approving parks and recreation fee schedule. This resolution, unfortunately, because of our COVID situation and the way things are going, we have had some cancellations through uh, this, this later part of summer from weddings, banquets, anniversaries at Dan Paulus, uh, the staff, uh, the, the Youth Bureau has decided that they can actually uh, continue with their summer program. This just sets the fee schedule past and beyond what they would normally do to continue bringing that forward. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. I just said weddings could go on. <laughs> well, unfortunately, they've already They've already canceled and moved into next year. <laughs> resolution FP5 by Legislator Martino. Finally, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have this resolution and urge adoption. Will the clerk please read the head? Resolution authorizing budgetary modification, Department of Community Development, Tourism and Planning, Census Outreach Initiative. Thank you. This resolution uh, was brought forth. We did not anticipate, but we were told that any census relief type funding that's going to be off the table this year uh, that has been reversed we have received half of what the original amount was for and we were told that we had to use it in a very short limited period of time uh, i bring this resolution forward uh, to the tune of uh, eighty three thousand nine hundred and forty four dollars thank you uh, thank you any discussion I think it's uh, important that we continue to advocate that uh, people in the county make sure that they're counted. Uh, it has a lot to do with the amount of federal funding that we get, uh, representation. Uh, there's a lot of things attached to this. Uh, it's good that we have some of it. We want to make sure that the county can. So it's a good point. We advocate all of us to reach out to your neighbors too. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Resolution FB6 by Legislator Martino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer this last resolution of urgent adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budgetary modification, unappropriated, unappropriated fund balance, COVID design. As we all know, we had a uh, line set up for COVID response uh, monies for anything that we needed it for. Uh, this this I ask to uh, move in $200,000 on recommendation from the chairman, uh, or the chairman, the county administrator. Um, we are hoping that this will carry us through to the end of the uh, situation we're in now. And uh, if not, we'll, we'll have to come back to the legislature to, to ask for more. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yeah, uh, just a question for the county minister. This funding would be reimbursable by FEMA still, correct? Right, and uh, that uh, status of that application is uh, uh, it's all being uh, documented now. We'll be getting the application for that funding. I don't know when it will come in, uh, but yeah, we're applying for reimbursement on every cent that we spend. Uh, they can only say no. <laughs> you know, hopefully they'll say yes to any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Any unfinished business? Any miscellaneous business? Thank you. Look for the appropriate motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. And adjourn. We move now to our public comment period. Uh, I would add. 
that we need to introduce our uh, have an, uh, introduction. I'll call you forward, or call you to the podium, I should say. You have five minutes to speak. We'll take it personally, but I will probably try to warn you in about 30 seconds to go. Um, we have a number of people who would like to speak, so we'd like to move it along best we could. Uh, first off, we have a Gordon Crossan. Good afternoon. Um, I felt I had to come and say something today. Anybody that knows me knows that I support the men and women of, of our law enforcement and first responders wholeheartedly. But I feel when it comes to the sheriff's office, that is different. The sheriff is elected by all of the people in the community <coughs> to serve the function of upholding the laws of the county, the state, the federal government. Now, when I was growing up, I was taught that your word was your bond, your handshake meant something. I was also told by some of my leaders when I was young that if you made a mistake, own up to your mistake and move forward. And that's, that's good advice. But what I've been reading in the paper and what our sheriff decided to do, I cannot agree with. He's elected to represent and protect all of the people. What he does on his own time is his prerogative. That is fine. But to take the stand and not, not admit a mistake, and to take the stand that he has taken, to me, just represents not the best of law enforcement and not the best of setting an example for everyone in the county. It just represents to me the height of arrogance. I'm sorry, that's all I've got to say. I felt I had to come and say something. Thank you very much for, for the opportunity. Okay, next we have Judy Prosser. Next, we have Sandra Nellis. We have five minutes. First, let me apologize for the music. I thought I would get the dance. Um, I, too, want to discuss the Sheriff's Department. I have always supported the Sheriff's Department. However, I do believe that our Sheriff is incorrect in putting the flag on the boat. I mean, there's like a government vote, and we should not be partisan to any of that. We should be just, you know, basically kind of 
they aren't that well thought of. Um, my other comment is in regards to what he set up the department regarding. Because of the fact that he is the predator, you know, or put a Trump flag on her, what does that mean when individuals have a Biden ticket or a Biden bumper sticker or a Biden flag in their yard? When it comes to the sheriff's department, does that mean they're going to be more apt to pull somebody over because of that? I think that they set themselves up for some litigation because of this. And I truly believe that not only myself, but many other county members would find him more respectful if he could get up and apologize and say he was incorrect in doing that instead of playing it off the way he has. Next we have Chris Weisenberger. My relatives 
and your relatives face down bullets. In this age, people are more afraid of a tweet than a bullet. Which shows more bravery, facing down a tweet or a bullet? Hilton has rejected the values of the Republican Party. He shows no character and he accepts no responsibility. He is not above the law. You are his legal legislature. If you do nothing, you are giving him tacit approval to do what he wants, just like staying silent when your child scratches your car. He is not a child. You cannot lecture him. You cannot expect him to listen. You cannot send him to his room and expect him to change his behavior. He has shown you who he is. Believe your eyes and ears. This is not about political parties. It is about integrity and doing what is right. Do not let him intimidate you with his words and actions. Thank you must impose strong consequences or he must resign. It is not about the law. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Next we have a Neil Barney, Neil Barney Jr. Thank you, you have five minutes, sir. Thank you very much. I have a original letter that I sent my legislator, Maurice Schott, and I'd like to read it. Dear Marie, the morning I sat down to read the Palladium of Times and I was stunned to see the headline on page one. Sheriff says, no problem with flying Trump campaign flag on county boat. Ooh. To think for a second that this was acceptable in any shape, form, or fashion shows a profound lack of judgment on Sheriff Don Hilton's part. If this is how Sheriff Hilton operates, I must call into question the hiring practices of the Sheriff's Department. The training of all personnel, including the supervisor. I call for the immediate resignation of Sheriff Don Hilton. This is a horrible stain on our Sheriff's Department and it has broken the trust I once had in the Oswego County Sheriff's Department. Sheriff Hilton swore an oath to all people of Oswego County, not just President Trump supporters. By his actions, Sheriff Hilton has made an already difficult and thankless job that much more difficult. Sincerely and respectfully submitted Neil F. Barney Jr., United States Air Force, 1976-1980, and I was a law enforcement specialist in the Air Force. When I was a young buck, I thought I wanted to be a cop, but after about a year of that, I changed my career paths. So, and I am a graduate of SUNY Oswego. And I want to thank you all for your attention and the opportunity to speak. I'm overwhelmed with joy. I live in a country where this is possible to show a little dissent. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, next, and forgive me if I uh, pronounce it wrong, but Joe Selta Malamach. <coughs> I can get rid of this, and uh, I can spank. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Joe Sultanaki, I'm here for the sheriff. I've known Dan for about a year now. He came to our uh, gun rally up in Fulton a year ago, I guess it was, and uh, I'm here to support him, and I think he was set up. I don't care what anybody says. There's, uh, their stories, and uh, I don't like it. This is supposed to be a free country. I'll be able to voice your opinion. Well, he was trying to be a nice guy, do something. The guys, they were all out there having fun. They weren't doing anything wrong. That's what the sheriffs were there for, to make sure nobody was doing anything wrong. Well, being a nice guy that he is, yeah, I'll take the flag and put it on the boat. Who do you hurt? Nobody. And I, I just, 
This is all crap. You see all this stuff on TV? They say nothing about anybody doing anything bad. Without well, anybody that's speaking their mind, they're putting you down. That's wrong. I don't, I don't know what else to say these. I mean, wake up. Wake up before it's too late. I'll tell you right now. You made it. I don't know how many of you are voting what way. But if you're not voting for Trump, you don't got my support. And I, I, I feel like just. This is all nuts. First Amendment, Second Amendment. That's why they're at first, and that's why they're second. And the second one says, do not have French. Yeah. Like I said, just, uh, I don't know if you're going to flag him for this or what, but I think he's a great guy. He was trying to be a nice guy at the time. That's why nice guys finish last. All I need, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Donald Panouse. You have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I noticed, I was pleased to notice looking over the agenda that you were concerned very much with the allocation of funds and resources and of workers. And that's what I'm here today to talk to you about, the allocation of funds and resources and the allocation of employees. It's clear that us Oswego County Sheriff Don Hilton used me county speedboat while flying a political banner endorsed by candidates for political office. I understand there were other people, other people from the sheriff's office who were there with him. I haven't heard, I haven't heard that he apologized. I haven't heard whether those people apologized. I haven't heard what would happen to them with the sheriff if they did apologize for what he had them do. The layers of responsibility that are here indicated need to be sorted out, and the people who are underneath this sheriff need to be noted and need to be given opportunity to separate themselves from this activity. The sheriff, as I say, has not apologized to the people of Oswego County for this inappropriate and possibly illegal use of county property. His candidate, Trump, has frequently expressed disdain and contempt for the law. I don't know if I need to even make a, begin to make a list of instances of that kind of contempt for the law or disdain for the people who obey the law. Even this acknowledgement of the illness which is around us and is a danger to all of us is a kind of acknowledgement that he has disdain for and perhaps has disdain for many, many, many people who have died, young and old, through this coronavirus. President Trump expressed such disdain for the law that he said he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue in New York City and go free. And go free. Is this the kind of attitude we want the sheriff of our county to be expressing, to be endorsing, to be demonstrating as an example to the youth and to the older people?
President Trump should not provide a pattern for obedience to law and for respect for the citizens of this country. And we should demand more from him, just as we demand more from the deputy sheriffs who are with him on that vote. We've got to draw the line somewhere. We've got to ask that the people who are working for us work for us, that their words will be followed and they will be in that they are just performing a kind of calm show in which they demonstrate contempt. No one is above the law. No one in Oswego County is above the law. And that's what's important for me to think.
and have no problem stirring up problems for our county and probably any other place that they go. I would hope that that's taken into consideration if any further action is going to be taken against our elected sheriff. So, thank you. Thank you. Next we have Kathy Saltalamaccio. Thank you, you have five minutes. Thank you. First off, I want to say I've never done anything like this before. Um, but if you can, I didn't write anything down. Um, and I, but I did feel like I get to come and put my two cents in. To me, this is such a much bigger issue than just some play on a sheriff's office. I am concerned for the first time in my lengthy life uh, for my way of life, for my country, for my rights that I never thought I would need to worry about. But the right to free speech, the right to own a gun, the right to, and I'll say assembly, because I got nothing against protests. If you feel strongly about something, do something about it. That's what I'm trying to do here today. But you don't lock policemen in a building and then set it on fire. That is not protest. We have so much going on in our country these days. And so much of it is anti-police. And I'll tell you, I've got a personal connection to the police. I had an uncle that was a policeman for years in this in this city. I have a nephew that worked his way up in the Oswego City Police Department. I have a stepson who is a law enforcement officer. I respect law enforcement officers. Apparently, so does Sheriff Hilton. I believe that Sheriff Hilton was showing his support for law enforcement. And if he put a, a, a Trump flag on the boat, I do not, I don't, and, and let me say this, I don't know if Sheriff Hill, I wouldn't know him if I tripped over him, never saw him, uh, I certainly never met him, so it's certainly no personal thing here. But I feel like he's the kind of man that needs to be in office, that's defending our rights, that was standing up for one of the only politicians in the entire country these days that defends law enforcement. What are we going to be when we just let all of our law enforcement officers die or be murdered, which a lot of these terrorists that have invaded our country are attempting to do? I'm here to give my support for Sheriff Hilton. I understand and I cannot argue that there's a rule against you know, displays of political, um, I'm not even sure of the word, decide with one political person over another, especially if you're you know, in public office and clearly so on the job. I, I understand that. But I don't even believe that Hilton was trying to support Trump. He was trying to support the issue of law enforcement, and he was showing respect to our current sitting president, because that's who Donald Trump is our current sitting president, and he deserves our respect. And I respect Sheriff Hill. I don't know what you guys are thinking is some kind of worthy punishment, uh, but I should think being told, hey, there is a rule against doing that when you're on the job, go home and put the flag in your front yard. Okay, I can accept that. Anyway, like I said, the first for me in my rather lengthy life, um, but I feel good for standing up for what I believe in, and I wish more people in this country would be doing that today. Thank you. Next, we have Robert Freegan. Five minutes, sir. Flag, and that's an issue. But for people, a 
lot of people I've seen have not looked at the actual contact of the flat that was shown. And it took a picture of the current city president, and it was present tense what was written on it. It said, making America great. Okay. So it wasn't Trump 2020. It wasn't an election flag. So the context was current tense. And you can walk in any county, town, village, federal building and walk in and see a photo or a portrait of a current city president. And all that is is showing respect for the current president. And I don't feel that our sheriffs did anything but show respect for our current president. And I don't see where they should be uh, reprimanded at all. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator 
according to the best of my ability. Now many of you may remember the oath of office card that you signed and you had to turn in to the county clerk. In that, it states what position you're on. So every elected official signs this, turns this in. At the bottom of it, it says public officer's law certificate, okay? Now it says, I, the appointee named above, hereby acknowledge receipt of a copy of section 73, 73A, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78 of the public officer's law. Now, if you guys didn't read that, you didn't know what the public officer's law does to you. But every elected official had to turn these in. Now, I just read to you three official documents and shown you in both the office card. Nowhere in there does it say that any elected official owes allegiance to any one person or party which means elected officials represent the people, not the party. We have 30 seconds, sir. And, I don't know. What are 30 seconds you're down to? You're down to it. Oh, you're down to it. Ah, I figured it's much. Anyways, it kind of went fast. Five minutes did. I didn't, my watch didn't stop. Well, thank you, sir. What it does say, no, it isn't. What it does say is that any and all elected officials are bound by law to uphold any and all laws and uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York. No one in these chambers or outside these chambers has the right to stop any one person's ability to support any single political candidate or party. Thank you, sir. In the interest of fairness, your time is up. No one in the legislative body has the authority to be judge, jury, and executioner. Next, we have Patty. The issue Bamble. at hand isn't about supporting the men in blue or not supporting the men in blue. It's about the law. The issue is whether or not public property was misused or any law was broken. One main issue that I have for sure, looking when I was on the legislature. No. Mr. Castillo, you sir know the rules of this chamber? Yes, I do, sir. And, and I know time, that you're in your time, sir. Your time, you sir, has expired. Five minutes. Your time okay. has expired by over one minute. Please yield to the next citizen. I will in just a second.
about COVID-19 and done a commendable job of minimizing the spread of this deadly virus. The county's message of collaboration, and we are all in this together, has been a model for what we hope our government, government will provide in times of crisis. Behind these leaders are the members of the legislature, department heads, and county workers who have made sure that essential services continue to be provided under very difficult circumstances. I salute all of you, and I thank you sincerely for your efforts. But now, unfortunately, I, I feel a need to address the disappointing conduct of the sheriff. As a public servant or a former public servant myself, um, I'm flabbergasted, really, by Sheriff Hilton's violation of county policy and law. And I'm just very glad that the health department and other county workers have decided to follow important county policy. The, the sheriff's well-publicized refusal to apologize, despite Chairman Weatherup's admonishment of his actions, is upsetting to me. I would like to suggest to the sheriff that there are many law-abiding citizens who support law enforcement but cannot support his disregard of the public trust. Many more of us support law enforcement but will not support police brutality. And many of us support a secure border but we will not support crimes against children and families. And many of us recognize the inequities caused by racism, and we believe that supporting reforms will make all of us safer, especially those who bravely dedicate their lives to law enforcement. I myself am wary of those who claim to support law and order, and at the same time support and seek the votes of racists white supremacists and conspiracy theorists, while pardoning criminals who have committed crimes on their behalf. Sheriff Hilton, I hope you will choose to apologize and demonstrate to those who elected you that you do understand the importance of operating the Sheriff's Department with integrity, fairness, and protection from political bias. I voted for you. And I'm a Democrat, as there are only two Democrat legislators. I think it's very important that the sheriff reassure the citizens of this county that he understands our concerns. Please do this so we can get back to the very important issues that we must face together without mistrust and without divisiveness. Your actions, Sheriff, have caused us to take our focus off of the collaborative message of inclusion and community building promoted by the Oswego County Legislature. This message is the best way to ensure the safety of your officers and the citizens of this county. Thank you. Thank you. We have Jim Latula.
I don't know that I've ever met a man more honorable, more respectful, more honest than this man. I spent my career as an executive search guy, and people are my thing. Uh, he's the real deal. And I thank God that we have a sheriff who's willing to stand up for all this BS that is going on in this country, destroying it. anyone speaking out against what's happening is vilified in the liberal media. Um, if you don't think there's fake news, you're not paying attention. Uh, I've made a point since uh, seeing this. I can't tell you what's bought the legal or not legal. That's not where I'm coming from. Um, I respect what he did. I thank God that he did it. I'm glad he's, he's our sheriff. And uh, anybody who speaks out against uh, what's happening in these communities, uh, the destruction of what's going on, and um, Blaming it on the police, they're vilified. In the news, uh, uh, it's incredible. This man not only deserves a break, he needs the support of every person in this county. And I think we should all thank God for having this man as our sheriff. We could do no better. And I, for one, uh, wish I could speak more eloquently and could speak to the law and could speak to all of that. I, that's, I'm talking from my heart here. Uh, he is one of the most honorable men I've ever met in my entire life. And uh, thank God for people like him. Legislator Wilbur, could you check? I believe that's our last speaker. The last one they sent. Double check here. That's it. That's it. Good night. Thank you all for coming. I was signed up to speak. I was signed up to speak. Sam Carter, WSDM. Well, we'll give you your five minutes, but I don't. You're not on our list. I don't know where you signed up. You signed up downstairs, Chair. You got a badge for entry, but you didn't sign up on oh, the sheet. But oh, sorry. Yeah. I thought I, I thought I did. I apologize. If I can just have a few minutes of your time, this won't take very long. Yeah, yeah, fine. Right, thanks so much. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> more than a few. Um, I've noticed that of the 15 speakers today, more than half uh, have spoken against uh, Sheriff Hilton. Does anybody on this council feel that he's damaged public trust in the office of sheriff? You guys have just been hard to pin down, so I thought I'd come to a public meeting to get some answers to the public at large. Do you guys feel the sheriff has diminished confidence in the sheriff's office as we go down this work? I'm happy to do this after in person if that's the case. I would only offer it to your five minutes that this is a public hearing, not a press conference. No, I'm with you, but I think that the sheriff has been impossible to pin down. He's dodged requests for interviews for two weeks and only done one with conservative radio. And 
I think it's fair that it never answer any questions about budget or legality of his actions. And I was wondering if one of you would talk to me directly after this meeting on camera about that. So I could get a commitment from really anybody in the room. I would love to. Right? You and I have a chat. I appreciate that. Um, I was just wondering, because it's, it's very, it's, it seems to be difficult. I've only had really feedback from two members of your body, uh, and I'd love to chat with somebody about it, because he did say, the day after you guys released that statement saying that he knows he did wrong and won't do it again, he said on the record that he doesn't feel he did anything wrong. So did he lie to you or did you guys did he lie to you guys or not? Because if he said that to you and then said that on the record, it appears that he did. Again, love to chat with one of you guys about it later. Camera guy next right here, he's a good dude. Take good care of you. Um, so uh, so how much time left? Three minutes. Uh, again, I would I would add this is a public hearing. Not a press conference. I understand that, but I would ask that one of you meet me directly after the meeting for a quick five minute talk on camera about how the legislative body plans to move forward with this. Because of the third of the fifteen speakers today, all of them talked about this. I don't know if fifteen is a lot for you guys or not, but uh, by my math, that's one hundred percent of speakers wanted to know about this. So I think it is. A pertinent question, and we would love to talk to you guys about it on camera. Can I get a yes or a no on that, at least? Yes or no. <laughs> you said no. Well, they won't give you a yes or a no. Don't you think that people are owed that, though? Hey, I've been in those seats, and I know what they are. All right, <laughs> All right well, I guess I'll just try and grab you guys after the meeting. I yield the rest of my time to Frank. Well, they won't let me speak again, but. Uh, the Marine will pound on the desk. <laughs>